Hello artists and visitors to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm bringing you something I'm so excited about. It's a do-it-yourself pastel painting storage album. Now before I forget, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and press the little bell icon to, to be notified when I post more videos. Now this could work for other mediums as well, such as charcoal pencil sketches, watercolor, but for the pastel artist world, we find it often kind of hard to find ways to store our somewhat vulnerable pastel paintings. I've been playing around with a do-it-yourself painting storage album system for a while and I was recently motivated to be able to create this because of something we had in my Patreon group called 12 Days of Healing. Because of our recent situation with the coronavirus, a lot of people uh, staying at home, we needed a lot of healing. So I presented this opportunity and my patrons have blown me away by their beautiful artwork they have submitted. I have done 12 paintings and they have used the videos that I've created to be able to create the paintings themselves. And the concept is for healing. Uh, it's been a crazy time lately. And again, this is an album that I have just for my patrons to post their work from the videos. And it's just absolutely wonderful. I feel like a mama hen. You know, I want to show all of them. And I, before you know it, I'll be just like spending this whole video showing off their artwork. Amazing work. So if you'd like to become a patron, uh, you can do so at patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins for lots more fun. It's a great group and they will be winning a prize. I'm going to have some prize winners later this week from their submissions. So again, if you'd like to become a patron, it's only $5 a month and you can cancel it anytime. All right, let's get started making our own do-it-yourself I should say painting storage album. Again, you could use it for different mediums, but it's really special for pastel artists because of the protection element. Let's do it. Here are the things that you will need to make your own album for original pastel paintings. Now, I have not attached this um, little uh, title that I'm going to put on it, title design, um, but basically, um, it's an advantage to have Photoshop because I was able to create this um, for this particular album. And uh, But you could do whatever you need. Now, I'm going to show you everything, and then I will be showing you how I adhere this, uh, which is the same way that I adhered this um, paper to the cardboard. So the things that you will need to make your own album will be cardboard, for these outer pages here. This is just some cardboard I literally got off of the back of one of my art tablets or pads that I had. I had a pad of like some acrylic paper actually and I noticed it was big the size I needed and um, so I cut me up two pieces of that. You'll need a front and a back. To cut the cardboard, because it's rather thick, I use a device that I use often to cut my foam board, mat board. It's called a Logan cutter. And I know there are various other tools to do this, but the one I use is model 701-1. I also use a paper cutter for cutting the interior pages of this book to keep nice crisp edges. Front and to back. And you will size, obviously, um, the size of your art album accordingly to whatever paintings you have. Now, I had strategically planned for my paintings during this 12 days of healing that we had to all be around 5 by 5. The only painting that wasn't close to those dimensions was the very last one because I, I did a lesson with a student and it would have been too small. So I have all 11 paintings in this little album. And... The interior pages, because they're pastel paintings and they're a bit more vulnerable than acrylic or oil paints or watercolor, um, is we need protection for it. So you also will need, I'll get to the pages of this first, you also will need pieces of glassine paper. Um, now I get my glassine um, from clearbags.com, www.clearbags.com. Um, I typically get these 11 by 14 sheets. I don't do a lot of work bigger than 11 by 14, but I have a roll that's bigger in case I need it. That's the, uh, that's the number if you need it. But I have heard, and I'm going to use this technique soon, that tracing paper, if you get acid-free tracing paper, it works the same as 
um, this for this purpose, okay? And it's a little bit cheaper. All right, so obviously we need the glassine, we need the cardboard. Um, we're also going to need the black uh, pages. I like black, you could use regular white drawing paper, anything that's acid free you can use for your pages. Um, and this is the black drawing paper that I used. It's a Canson black drawing paper nine by 12. And uh, I actually use it to paint on, even though with pastel painting, we typically like sanded surfaces. I kind of like this uh, black surface sometimes. I like using new pastels and other pastels on it. So I had some of this already, but it's a great paper to use for this purpose or any black acid-free drawing paper. Also, to tape the edges here, you will need, I mean, if you're using black paper, you'll need the black tape. If you're using white paper, you'll need the white artist tape. So I just have the little half inch black artist tape. Um, I'll show a picture of that um, to adhere the paintings to this. Now, what I do for that is I put a little piece of tape on the back. Here's the artist tape. And what I do is I turn the painting over. I'm gonna get one and show you. This is a little pear painting that I did on some watercolor paper. And I'm gonna show you uh, as an example or demonstration on this one, how I do the artist tape. I wanted to do a quick voiceover here to let you know why I'm using the half inch artist tape rather than some of the wider ones. It's because you only have so much room between your painting and the edge of the paper and the thinner tapes are better. Now I'm laying down a piece of glassine paper here. The reason you use the glassine paper to protect is it kind of helps things from smudging and it protects your work in between the pages. So what I do is I basically just take, and, and a lot of pastel papers, watercolor papers can kind of curl. So what I do is I take the artist tape about the size, I go a little bit shorter, about the size of the painting. I like to cut it rather than tear it so it has a clean edge presentation really I'm learning is everything. And what I do, I kind of go to where the edge of the painting is and I come down about halfway and I tape it and I flatten the painting out when I do that so that uh, it'll lay more flat. Then I do the same thing on the bottom. You get better at this the more you do it about like at eyeing things like that. Um, then, after you do that, of course, it's probably going to stick to whatever surface you had. Then what I do when I put it in the book, if it was on a black page, um, let me get the black paper. Let's say this was the page of your book, is I basically lay it, place it where I want it, and I do the same thing with the artist tape. But what you want to do is you want to make sure on this one that you go just a little bit longer because, I'll show you in just a second why, because you don't want any of this tape exposed, the one that's facing up. And the reason for that is because it will stick to your little glassing pages that are, that are protecting the painting. So I try to come down a little bit over it. I didn't do a real good one there, but we'll just leave it for this purpose. Um, a little bit over it again, so I don't have any of that um, sticky stuff um, showing here because otherwise your little glassing pages are going to stick to that when you try to uh, reveal it. So that's really how I, I would do the same thing to the bottom, of course, same thing. So that's how I adhere the painting safely to the um, pages within the book. All right, so other than um, your black painting tape and your black pages and or white, whatever you choose, um, your sheets of glassine or tracing paper in between each page, okay? Nice and safe. Again, I'm, I'll have a video of the, of the presentation of this. It's just such a nice presentation. Oh, and if anything gets on the back like here, um, you can use a kneaded eraser. This is a kneaded eraser that you can buy at an art supply store. Um, it's spelled K-N-E-A-D-E-D. -E and they're really great erasers um, for pastel, for removing um, pastel in areas that you don't want it. See, it just took that right up. They're neat because you can stretch them. When you stretch them, you kind of, you're cleaning it actually. You're moving the dirt around or the residue. Um, but they work really great. You see that just came right up. 
All right, so other than the glassine, the paintings, the tape, um, the black pages, um, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the book, uh, and the cardboard, we also need, how did, I, how did I do this with this cardboard? I mean, obviously this cardboard didn't look that nice. <laughs> it was just a plain, kind of a gray piece of cardboard that I had. So what I did, uh, again, you wanna cut it to fit. What I did, and I'll talk about more of the sizing in a minute. What I did is I got some of this um, French prep designer paper. I just got this from Walmart. I keep some of these things of paper. Um, they're just so pretty. Sometimes to wrap paintings in uh, before I ship them to a customer. Presentation is just, it means so much to your client when you make it look presentable. Um, these, I get various um, different designs uh, I like this one, I think this is pretty neat. But uh, they only work for my smaller paintings. I have to do something different for bigger paintings. But I thought this would be neat to cover the cardboard of my little album for my original painting display. And I liked this. Um, I didn't have enough pages to do this design on all four, but I had a companion color uh, that worked well. So I decided to do this pattern on the outsides and the other pattern on the insides. All right, so how did I do that? How did I get that to stick on that? Well, I'm gonna show you by the same method I'm gonna use to get my little title to stick on the front of this album. What I use is just some self-adhesive spray, okay? Or, or spray adhesive, I should say. This is just one that's made by Elmer's company. And um, it's kind of like spray, spray paint. You know, you shake it up and it works really well. I am gonna take this outside to spray it. But there's multiple different spray adhesives you can get. Um, and I like this one because it allows for repositioning. If you get it wrong, uh-oh, it's a little crooked, you can peel it up. Um, I try to get it right the first time anyway, just in case. <laughs> and it's fast tack and it dries clear, okay? So this is something that works well for adhering things to. So what I did, and I wish I had had a video of it, but I, I took my paper, I, I actually cut the paper a little bit larger than the what I was putting it on. And uh, I didn't do it on all of them, I learned that afterwards. Uh, a little bit larger because once you just lay it on top, and I wanted to make sure I got this pattern lined up right, I could turn it over and use an X-Acto blade to trim the edges. That way I know I didn't lay it down and expose anything here. So that gives it a nice full coverage. Cut it a little bit larger, spray adhesive on the back, go outside to spray it, spray it on the back, then you can bring it back in and position it on your cardboard. I did the same thing, obviously, for all four sides. And now, prior to doing that, I actually went ahead and had my husband help me drill these holes. A hole punch is not going to work on something this thick. So I used um, a drill, actually, my husband's drill out in the garage, just to drill the holes. I knew I just wanted to position two holes. I went an inch and a half in for two. I knew that would be fine. And I did that on both boards before I put the paper on. And then literally, once I had the paper on it, I could feel where the hole was. I just pushed in to make a little indention and I just took a pen or whatever and, and completed the hole on both sides. So then you have your boards ready, okay? And you have your holes punched and you've got your pages. And so what I did, I'm actually gonna take mine apart so that you can see how this is done. Actually, I may not take the whole thing apart because it takes a while to put this together. What I did is I took pieces of twine, just this twine, because I thought it looked really organic and nice. And to get uh, easily the twine through the holes of the board and the pages, oh, I'm gonna mention about the pages too, hole punching those. I took a piece of scotch tape, um, just uh, matte finish tape, and I wrapped it around the edges. You can choose to cut this off at the end when you're finished if you'd like. If you think this is gonna be a book where you're gonna re-add pages or take pages out, then um, you can leave it on. I'm gonna leave mine on because 
I don't think I'm going to sell the paintings out of this album because it was a special time, a special memory. And uh, so I may not. But uh, again, I'm planning on making more of these albums and I want to make an adjustable way, an easy way to add and remove paintings because this is a neat way to just sell your artwork. You can actually uh, show this to clients. You could have these at little shows. You know, you could sell it online and keep them in books to be nice and compact. And um, but I wanted it removable. Uh, in the future, I plan to use little rings that are easier than the twine. Again, this is a little prototype here. But anyway, so you basically just thread this through the holes. And now, let, on that note, let me talk about this. You obviously just line up your um, glassine. I have the, the black pages are cut the same size as the board. Let's see what the size of my board is. Again, this is gonna have to be determined on your paintings. And you may wanna create some paintings with this idea in mind. All right, so this is the section on what size do I make my album? Again, I with this idea in mind of presenting them all as one for this 12 Days of Healing Challenge, I made all of mine about five by five. Some are six by six, some are a little larger. Um, so I knew I needed a notebook larger than the paintings and they needed to be large enough to give me room to tape down okay so i thought hmm if they're five by five i wanted to make it a little wider to give me room on the sides for punching the holes as well for example if i had my painting so close to the edge over here i'd have to have my hole punched so close to the edge that it would be more vulnerable now in the future i do plan on putting some little supports on. The glassing's probably going to be the most vulnerable for tearing. Um, if you, I, I don't foresee opening this book over and over and over and over again. Um, so it's not like it's gonna get used so much that it's that vulnerable, but I do think pay, um, whole supports will be good for that. But again, make your notebook wide enough to allow to put your painting over far enough for the hole punches. Okay, so that is why I made my notebook. It's eight by seven. Again, a little wider than it is tall to allow for the hole punch. So if you're doing, you know, whatever size you're doing, give it uh, about at least another inch on the side um, to allow for those hole punches. So all of my pages, the black uh, drawing paper pages are the same size as the cover. I may have done it just a tad lower. Not really. They're, they're close to the same size. Um, but the glassine, I have just a little bit smaller. Okay. It's just a little bit shorter this way. I didn't want the edges of the glassine sticking out, but big enough to cover the painting. Okay. So your drawing paper, whether you use black or white, will be the same size as your cover board, your um, cover for your book, and your glassine will be the same width, but perhaps a little shorter in height. Now, with the method that I used to bind the book, I guess you could say, with my little cute twine method, in the future, again, I'm gonna start using some sort of ring system to make it easy, but this was nice, it looked nice. Make sure you don't tie this too tight. You are not gonna be able, if I tied this this tight, um, you're gonna get, you need to have room so that, like if you're in the middle of the book, so that it'll open up, let me pull it real tight. You can't really get, the book open this way. It bind, you see how it's crimping and binding? So you need to allow, I'm just gonna loosen the whole thing up again. You need to allow so that you can open it up and lay it flat like this, see? I actually need to give a little bit more room down here, a little bit more room on that to be able to really open that book up. Oh, no, actually, I have it wider. I just didn't pull it out. So you see my point? If you have it bound so tightly, you can't open the book up and turn the pages. Okay, oh, also I didn't mention, for the pages inside, I obviously didn't have to use the drill like I did for the thick cardboard. I just used a hole punch. It was the correct size. I did take a uh, my glassine because it's so thin. I put like four or five pages together, lined up where the holes needed to be, and punched a few of them at a time. Instead of 
individually punching every single page each time, okay? So they're thin enough to do that. And I did the drawing paper uh, similarly um, by, I think, doing like two pages at a time if I did any more. This is the drawing paper I used is a nice thickness. It's not quite cardstock, but it's thicker than um, printer paper. Um, so anyway, a hole punch works fine for creating the holes for this. All right, now let me show you. Uh, I can't take you outside with me to spray this, but I'm going to spray the back of this, and I'm going to adhere it to the front of my little album for a time of healing. Also, I, I'd like to mention that when you use the spray adhesive, uh, be careful with your hands. Um, already you can see I, I got a little tackiness on my fingers because this glue is sticky and it will stick to your fingers and it kind of makes it hard to work with. Now, because I can't get underneath my camera there, I'm gonna turn it a little sideways to adhere this. Now, I'm noticing something here. Um, you guys may want to use, I used regular printer paper. Now, I'm actually gonna, I'm looking at this. I'm gonna use cardstock for this. You see how the um, the glue is kind of showing through the paper so thin? I was a little concerned about that. And I, I was trying to cut corners and not have to do that, but I'm actually gonna go do this with cardstock. I'm gonna print the same thing out. Okay, so here is the do-over with cardstock rather than regular paper. You see there's uh, no bleed through with the um, adhesive spray. I'm going to turn it sideways because I can't get underneath my camera like that. And I'm just going to eye it. And it does help that my pattern of these little dots is here. <laughs> it helps me to line it up. I like it kind of right there. Yep, that looks nice. Once you get it on, keep clean hands definitely when you do this. And we just adhere it. And looky there. You've got a nice little album um, that you can present your book for something special like this moment I had with my patrons during the challenging time in our world in 2020 and how beautiful it is that art is healing and brings us life and joy. So I hope you enjoyed this and I really think pastel artists will love this technique of creating a system to keep your painting safe. Also, very quickly, I'm gonna share a little bit about that cute little bracelet I had on right there throughout the video. And it is a new design in our Monet Cafe bracelet series. We have two new designs in a series called Earth Colors. And you can see why. They literally look like soft pastels to me. But what's so neat about these is these colorful stones are actually like little lava rocks. I think that's the material they're made out of. And they are for applying essential oils to them. They soak in the essential oils and they smell so good. There are two styles. One is called Hippie Chick. That's the ones with the beads alternating. The colors alternate. And the other is called Gypsy Girl with all of the stones in a row. I'll have a link to the Etsy store of the designer that worked with me to create these bracelets in the about section of this video. So hope you guys love that. Again, please subscribe, come back often, and as always, happy painting. <music>